this one to begin with? I think I come from that world of Ajin, and I myself mainly responsible for the architecture of the software and also will provide the computation service and the implementation. Uh, I will also give you a brief introduction. Uh, I'm Jason Huang, I come from Microsoft. And I mainly specialize in Windows Server and performance tuning. And then uh, I worked in the Department of Authority of Software, about the solutions of cloud native and the architecture. So today we will briefly introduce the work that we have done. And today our topic is about the container technology and how it drives the Windows application transformation. Uh, actually, Windows Container from 2016 server, it supports the Windows Container. So today, first, I'd like to introduce the experience of lifting and shifting about the legacy application, how to migrate them to a Windows Container. And the next part, the second part and the third part, Mr. Hu will introduce the hybrid Kubernetes cluster, as well as the future challenges and the solutions for challenges. I will briefly introduce the first part about the lifting and shifting. Why Microsoft is doing the Windows container support, that is because the context, the background. Five to six years ago, uh, when my, one of my friends worked in financial industry, he asked me, do you know ABC? That is American born Chinese, right? American born Chinese, and he told me that ABC is AI, big data, and cloud. So you can notice that they know much. Of, they know more about the ABC, the AI and cloud technology, than even than us. So that means our technology develops so rapidly, and it also poses high requirements to our technical people, and we should also think about how to adapt to these development trends. And also in IT industry, they told me uh, this technology based on the Excel. So there is a big gap between the business and the technology, and that requires the transformation of IT industry. Three to five years ago, the traditional industries like the Donetsk Windows 2.0 version and 3.5 version, these are the old application programs, and they may encounter a lot of problems. One of the problems that is unavoidable is every generation product of Windows has their own life cycle, and most of the legacy applications, they will um, develop faster than Windows Server. Although the Windows Server is keeping upgrades, but as well as the SQL Server 2008, this is also the same case. Well, actually, in next months, it's time for Windows Server. It's the deadline for its support for scalability. And as you know, that at present, for any product, any program, or any external internet, you will encounter such attacks. And there is no update for the security issues. And this is very risky. For SQL Server 2008 and 2008 R2, and the deadline is next year for the support of the scalability, so it will also become very risky to use it. For traditional applications, we can use container technologies to migrate it. But, uh, just to a brief survey, at present, uh, how many of you know about the container technology? How many? Okay. Okay, you know Windows Container, right? So Windows Container, I will give a brief introduction about it. Uh, it's a Windows, support, Windows Server supported from the 2006 version, 16 version, and it has two pathways. For example, first is to separate, because it has user mode and your process is in user mode. Although we have the process separation or split, 
but it is namespace separation for speed. This is the first container, but for some others, they have special requirements for security, or they need to be split step by step. That means we have Hyper-V isolation. That is another Windows container, and such container from user mode process to kernel mode, it is completely isolated from each other. So during the host process, they are completely isolated from each other. And for the former one, actually you can see the process in host process in Windows Server. They still have the process uh, isolation. So these are the two kinds of the Windows container. So for these types of Windows container, how can we migrate the traditional use the traditional application, maybe WCF or MPC, this kind of uh, traditional application programs, we need to migrate. Normally we would have several steps. The first is to confirm the scale. You need to know about the Windows container, what it can do and what it cannot do. If your application is appropriate to be migrated, I will just give you a brief uh, introduction about the Windows container, the problems that you will encounter. For example, the integration identification. Because if it is internal, then it will need to have the identity verification. But dark Windows container it does have does not have the domain key. Actually, container is non-stateful because uh, because it wants to be uh, quickly rapidly provisioned. But if you cannot do that, the solution is MSA service comp. It can be an agent for the AD identity verification. Traditionally, the Windows server they relies on the components of the server itself, for example, DNS or DHCP or AD. But in Windows container, you cannot install these kind of components. They cannot be installed in Windows server. But if your application relies largely on the components, Maybe you should uh, know that this cannot be directly migrated to Windows Container. Another point to make is if you have UI, if you are form application of Windows, not web application, the UI cannot be put in Windows Container because it does not have the relevant components. So these are some issues that you may encounter. For traditional application, since we already know the limitations of Windows Container, we should confirm the scale to include what kind of applications to migrate. Also, you also need to confirm whether your web is non is stateful or non-stateful. After confirming what to be included, we should also know that whether our resources are fully prepared. Because for traditional, we may use some patches and to restart it. So we need to reconfirm that whether those resources are ready, are well prepared. And we should know the used containers, whether they are ready. Also for some supporting resources. Because as we know, when you search on the Windows container, I, for our CI, CD, and DevOps, if they are ready and well prepared, if they if we need to rely on some third party resources, and then after all the resources and the scale has been confirmed, we should evaluate whether we can come up with a roadmap, a scheme, and which way of migration would be the most appropriate. And next, I, uh, later I will give you three roadmaps. The three pathways, so that we can come up with a general an overall scheme of the migration, and about the strategies and the roadmap. This actually this is constantly introduced because we cannot have a very perfect one at the very beginning to ensure that it is flexible and agile. Because if you spend a lot of time on optimization. 
After you, you finish your optimization, the businesses have already been changed, so you cannot meet, satisfy the requirements, the keep changing requirements. And about the migration strategies, generally, we will divide it into three steps. The first is leave and shift. And it, that is to put your applications on the S. And that means you put your S, the virtual machine, on your cloud, no matter what kind of cloud, the, that platform. And your intention maybe cannot be achieved, although it is quite simple, but the problem is you need to, you cannot get the flexibility actually, as a matter of fact, because you need to have uh, some patch and update. But if you are 2008 server, you will also encounter the problem of life cycle. So you cannot actually acquire the, uh, the flexibility. And the second step is optimization. We can, after knowing about our traditional applications, we can containerize in Windows container. And in this container, uh, these containers can be deployed on different cloud platforms. You can build your own platform based on S. Also, you can use the PaaS clusters like the product of Microsoft and this can help you to improve the flexibility of the application because container is self-contained, self-reliant. So um, sometimes the testing and the producting, they are conflicting with each other. So after we give them a package to put in Windows Server, Windows Container, so that from depth to test and to production, you will encounter less problems. And the last step is cloud native. And that means during this stage, we need to reconstruct the whole application to redesign the whole application. And you will rely on optimizing your applications to adapt to the cloud native environment. So from this perspective, we can see these three steps. Uh, actually, it's not one to two or two three. Well, actually, for every project, every program, during which period, which resources are the most appropriate and which step is the most needed. You can also have some containerize or some reconstructing and to deploy them on your cloud platform to improve its scalability. So from the the perspective of advantages and force control, actually for the lifting and shifting, it has the fastest speed of migration, but actually it cannot provide you with the flexibility. But for optimization, actually it is uh, of mid-level, it has very few source codes. As long as you know about your applications, you can just dissolve it. And the netball work, most of the windows the netball work Actually, they have quite decent resources. For example, they to do. It can simply support and to add the containerized support for you. So there is a type of this kind of um, pluggable components to help you. And the last one is uh, the has the highest cost and it is much slower. So finally. Uh, Huajun will introduce. I also want to make another point that is the uh, base infrastructure. If, if your infrastructure is ready or well prepared, actually it needs to be fully adaptive to the containerized programs so that it can help those applications to satisfy our requirements and needs. Another point to make is the security and the protection, because in containerization, those boundaries of security will also be changed. So if we can adapt to it, and if we can, if it is fully secure and can be fully protected. And finally is the DevOps. And right now, whether our DevOps can be fully applied to the Windows container and to fully adapt itself to the ecosystem.
Thank you, thank you for the introduction. And next, I will introduce the infrastructure. Just now, we talk about the infrastructure needs to be well prepared. But for Kubernetes, how, what kind of work that we need to do? Actually, in the past two day, in the past two years, we realized a deployment of hybrid cluster, and this is its infrastructure. It is quite simple and not that complicated. As you know, the case. That means you make the most complicated things the simplest. So it is controlled by the control plane and within the Windows. So in this, all in this managed in this hybrid cluster, and for the community maintenance and for the, we have one. Uh, hard work for the past few uh, period of time. Uh, they made efforts on code writing and management. So from the perspective of a manager, they can find the architecture is quite easy. And like the Linux node and the Windows node, they can be for the system requirement I listed uh, as listed on this slide, you can show that you can have a clear support for that from the Windows Server 2016. We already support that. Well, for Kubernetes, we recommend the Windows Server 2019, so the new features can be better supported. Well, for image. We classify categories for the traditional, which support the traditional applications, while the other for support the core application. So these images will basically classify into two types, which I will uh, elaborate that later. Well, for the IP requirements for resource consuming, it has a gap. No matter for the memory or CPU consuming or utilization, they have differences. And this slide shows the uh, issues about the basic images for enterprise uh, projects. We have some traditional latency applications. Can they unify the operated or management? The answer is no. So since we have the knowledge or basic knowledge of images, so during the migration and planning, we can, do, we can consider them to migrate these images into the new platform or for the new applications. The new applications are much more better, of course, since we have a more solid investment and a better development. So the new applications must be better and must. Uh, more suitable for the new platform. And this is about the upgrade system version compatible. Well, for Windows Server 2016, if you have used the controller, you must know some limitations we have. But the limitations was great. Long ago, so I will just clarify that. But we have just some specifications for the Windows, uh, for the operation systems. And these two versions are not compatible, but if you, on, uh, if you can check the snapshot on the right corner, you can see that the problem has already been issued. So I believe you need to pay close attention to the Windows or Microsoft uh, updates. We have made great efforts on that. For now, we have the offline deployment, and uh, we support uh, Flannel and IPOD uh, through the Flannel, and we can unify the connect the whole network of our platform. No matter if you use the Windows or Linux system, we can use this uh, middleware to connect different systems. This slide shows the network planning, and we use the Ford uh, IP address, and you can change the IP address according to your production scenarios or operating scenarios. You can make adjustments accordingly. And we have the cluster subnet and the service subnet. Uh, subnet. Well, for the testing environment, we built the cluster, which is quite easy. Well, for the past years, 
The community had made a great efforts in integration. So we have made it very easily to build the cluster and provide an environment for everyone to know and uh, learn about our community and the cluster. And I will just uh, show the different steps for the cluster establishing. According to our experience and the on-site scenario, this is quite an offline environment provided by our clients. So we need to be prepared the images and to deploy that. Since the network is quite complicated, so now you you may want to consider about this step. For the next step. Actually, I have a demo video, but uh, the video will not elaborate the steps of establishing cluster uh, specifically, but only focus on the deployment and the testing steps. For the demo, uh, it's about uh, 180p, it may not clear for audience at the back row, I will just elaborate that. This is the control panel, and we have 400 hosts. <coughs> This is the Windows nodes, and as you can see, in the Windows nodes, there are some labels to describe the topic of the host, showing that the Windows nodes just integrated into the Kubernetes cluster. And you can see here, this is the OS image version information. It shows the 2019 standard version. And it also includes a Kubernetes version. It's from the 1.14, which supports the Windows environment. Well, let's check the Linux nodes. As you can see, the Linux nodes are based on set OS. Then I will check the container. As you can see on the slide, there are no containers deployed uh, in this cluster. And then I will just uh, run the scripts to make the deployment. For the scripts, I mainly use a Python module to manage the cluster, establish the module. It just uh, can implement uh, multi comments of copper. So just to copy that model or script into the testing environment to implement that. The first time I deployed a Linux container, and then I deployed a Windows SP.NET container and the dot .cloud application. And then I will just reload the page. As you can see here, the container has been successfully deployed in this cluster. Now, if you are quite familiar with Kubernetes, you can see that we can use, we can access to these applications via, uh, via pods. And we can assign the different uh, clients on Windows. And we can select one to access the information. And this is a Kubernetes running demo. If you can check the foreigner Kubernetes demo video, you must be quite familiar with that. This is a ASP.NET application, which is quite a traditional and a classic. For now, I will use the .NET Cloud application, and all these applications are unified, deployed in the same cluster. And showing that with the new Kubernetes technology, we can manage the traditional applications and the modern applications as well. And this demo just to virtually show the five steps. And for the cluster establishing steps, has been already uploaded on our official website. If you're interested in this check that. And for just now, I showed the Kubernetes pod selection demo. Since our ecosystem is quite flourish, and we can select. For now, I'll just briefly introduce the future challenges. I make it as four points. The first is quite high level, dimensional, 
As for the organization, when we deliver the projects, we need to focus on the organization, the, the state that the organization is in, and the maturity of that, and including the personnel of that organization and the technology preparation. For the first two points, there is the organization and the peer really. As you can see that uh, in a paper, but uh, Eric, if you're interested, you can check that. Well, for now, I'd just like to see the business digitalization and the digitalized business, which is quite a traditional application and the modern digitalized application. We need to have clients to containerize these applications and make it in the form of cloud native. Well, for the period, actually, it says that the current period that the organization is in, which are quite important for different periods, the enterprise has different requirements for the container or container platform. If you're in the initial period, or it's quite in the emerging period, we just introduce a cloud native concept and we will show the new technologies, but if the clients are quite mature, maybe they already have the digitalized business, they may require a higher requirement. We may have high requirements on the quality of the transformation and the whole effect, which is quite, uh, which is quite a challenge for our project. Well, for now, if you do the business or project management, you must be familiar with this topic. It can be quite easy or quite complicated. But if you communicate with the technical personnel, it's quite easy, but ultimately, we need to face to the whole business, so it's a quite a complicated process. So we need to communicate with the basic technical personnel and the high-level managers, and including the project implementation and new technology introduction. We need the support from high-level managers or from the project team. We know in the internet the personnel flow is quite frequent. In some experience, maybe lost during this process, which is quite not helpful for our company, for the project or for the project delivery. So during the whole process, we need to manage the whole team and from the establishment phase to the uh, isolation phase, we need to transfer or pass on the knowledge and experience accumulated by the team. We're going to focus on this time. I'll just tell something about the technology. And we have two stories. One, uh, the first story is that someone asked before the Windows containerization. Actually, when the project was delivered at that time, the project was delayed. Uh, delayed. By that time, the developer was not ready, so at that night, I spent a few hours to continuize the Windows Form application, which is quite particular. Since this application do not require the frequent interface interaction, so I made modifications to run the applications in the Windows container. And I snapshot this, and I took it as a memory and also as an example. But for the second example, it's actually about the printer spooler. From last year, actually, I focused on this uh, example. Since this service greatly, it's quite important for many online services. As you can see, when we book the flight ticket, and we have the electronic journey uh, a bill, and how can we print, print it out to print from a PDF file to a paper document? So during this process, this step is quite important. And we communicated with experts and the PMs of the Microsoft, and we promote the feature in the whole community. 
You make it one, and I take an example here. Do so you know that Microsoft is a large scale company, and when Microsoft launches software, it's quite difficult. Because if you are quite familiar with the software launching process of Microsoft, which is quite complicated actually, and if you're familiar with Oh, well, here, I will take the PowerShell example, which is quite important. Uh, if you're interested, you can check the link in this PPT. And for now, for the future, we have some uh, questions for the future. You know, I'm delivering in the past uh, how to actually operate it. And at present, we use Linux or our open source technology to integrate it with our Microsoft technology and this is accessible the scripts to collect the data, the information and to judge our, the state of our current operation. And here as you can see, it will require that you, you need to have highly efficient capability, your interpretation of the Windows operating system as well as your interpretation of executing the Ansible scripts. So it still pose challenges to our uh, technical personnel, and we need to prepare the relevant technical personnel. And next is the Q and A session. Um, if any of you have any question, feel free to ask me. Well, I want to ask 2016 version and 2019 version how to support the secret and namespace of Linux. How to support the mechan mechanism? Well, actually, process isolation it already has, but Linux it can be supported by 2016 version. So uh, actually, they are slightly different because for these two systems, they are slightly different. So some of the concepts they cannot be equivalent to each other. And here we will try our best to bridge the gap and to. Uh, realize the consistent experience, user experience. Yes, this support, uh, we have invested a lot of time and energy in this supporting. Actually, we have internet to talk about the core, the internal core of Windows Server 2019 from debugging and how to do the isolation. It is quite detailed. Hello, just now I noticed uh, in your deployment of the cluster, why you need to ensure that it can only be deployed on that node. For Windows node, yes, this one. How to interpret it? Well, actually, it should be deployed, but it has different ways of deployment. So, in Microsoft documents, you can see it needs to have a patch to deploy the points to the to that node, and the Windows deployment to use the script and to migrate on the Windows Server 2019, the core policy process to deploy. So they have different ways of deployment, slightly different, and they are not consistent with each other. So we'll deploy them respectively. And here I also want to mention, actually this slide is not that detailed. Actually it has Linux nodes and Windows nodes. They will be put into cluster respectively. Well, previously, uh, if we can, uh, because the virtual machine, it is quite slow to to start. So last year, uh, the first half of last year, at that time we didn't have solutions, but now we have Windows image. Last year on Bitcoin, we already released it, and it will support the direct list. And we need to evaluate the render because at present uh, Windows is still in its process of promotion. So we also invite those 
friends and colleagues, counterparts to communicate with us how to uh, integrate better or how to operate better. I think because this kernel is shared. So it's a matter of resource competition. Uh, sir, please use the microphone or the interpreter cannot hear the question. Please use the microphone. Yes, the traditional one would be faster. Our shared resources are copied from memory, not from the disk. So this will be a large improvement in terms of the performance. Any other questions? The last question. Actually, I have two questions. The first, because Windows already have their own kernel. Uh, how about the 2019? Because it has been added the namespace. Uh, if it exists on the server, or it also has some, uh, has it on other version. Version. Actually, Windows container. Uh, it is deployed on the user and user terminal through the full stock and it can be supported for us developers to use it but for the server it will use another way so specifically for namespace mechanism if it will be provided in all the versions yes I I think you mean the ways of isolation right actually the isolation uh, only be provided on HiKV on, on user terminal. The second question is if we can use Hyper-V or namespace isolation, uh, how about their performances? Any difference? We are evaluating some traditional applications because we need to cultivate our group of users to uh, promote the application of the container. So with this foundation basis, maybe we can do some further promotion work. So you mean at present you do not have some uh, um, initial things, right? It's still in